The SACP is rejecting the Limpopo cabinet reshuffle. The province's premier, Stan Matabata, has axed three MECs. He says the aim is to improve service delivery in Limpopo. We've got Ian says Moloko Moloto, who's following the story uh, for us, and actually spoke to the premier a little bit earlier. So, Moloko, the SACP is an alliance partner of the governing ANC, and uh, it's interesting that they don't support the decisions. And part of that issue, which is something that you pressed the premier on is the VBS saga and the two MECs that were implicated when the scandal broke in 2018. So, Rofiwa, the premier fired three MECs. To, uh, yesterday, he made the announcement yesterday. And, of course, among them is uh, Poli Bushielo, who is or was the MEC of uh, Transport and Community Safety. You should understand that uh, she is also a Central Executive Committee member of the South African Communist Party. Now, when the Premier fired the three MECs, she, he has replaced them with uh, three others, of course. Two of those happen to be former mayors of uh, the Bembe District Municipality. I'm talking here about uh, Florence Radzilani, who is the deputy chairperson of the ANC in the province, but also Nakedi Sibanda, who is the treasurer of the province, in the, of the ANC in the province. She is now the MEC of Sports and Culture. She was the mayor of the small municipality of Lepel and Kumpi. These two municipalities respectively invested 300 million rent and 150 million rent unlawfully onto the now defunct VBS. So the SACP is totally unhappy with that. It's saying that, look, the investments into the VBS bank was both unlawful and immoral. Now, the, uh, they are saying as the SACP that despite the fact that the Premier has consulted them or the ANC consulted them when he considered the reconfiguration of his cabinet, they say that any person in the provincial cabinet who is implicated in the VBS scandal must resign with immediate effect and they are emphatic saying that they reject this reconfiguration um, on its entirety. So you also had a chat with the Premier, as I've mentioned um, in my intro to you. Um, how does he justify the decisions to reshuffle? I mean, he sounded very adamant that uh, he's happy to do so whenever the need arises. And you also highlighted that it's something that he's done quite often during his tenure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, since his re-election as the provincial chairperson of the ANC here in June, this is the second reshuffle of his cabinet. The first one happened just a month after his re-election his re as the party boss in the province. And what we saw there was that he actually demoted Dr. Dixon Masemula, who contested him for the ANC's top position. So he removed him from the portfolio of infrastructure and public works, and he shifted him to the small portfolio of uh, social development. Now, he also moved Poli Bushielo, who was in charge of education. He moved him to the Department of uh, Community Safety and Security. Today, he's fired them. He also fired the former Deputy Secretary General of the African National Congress Youth League, Tandi Muraga, who was involved or was in charge of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Of course, the Premier was asked whether he considered this VBS scandal, the fact that those two former mayors, Rofiwa, were actually fired from their mayorship positions after this revelations emerged. Let's listen to how he defended his decision. I'm a, a bit concerned about that statement. But definitely the organization being the African National Congress will respond to that statement. 
uh, because uh, the organization, being the African National Congress, consulted with the South African Communist Party before these changes were made, and they did not raise these issues that they are raising in that, in that memo. But all in all, they are an independent organization. They are entitled to their views. So, um, well, that is their view. And this was an interesting one, Moloko. Some of the former MECs were actually fired while they were out of the country conducting the province's business. In fact, of the three MECs who've been fired, let me quickly start with Polly Bushiello. When the news broke of her dismissal from the provincial cabinet, she was actually in the strategic session of her department. So you can tell that she was already mulling over the long-term plans of the department. She's no more in that position, so she will not see the implementation of those plans that she was part of um, a, a crafting. Let's now go to Dixon Masemola, Dr. Masemola. We are told that he was actually in one event where he had been sent or delegated by the Premier himself to represent him in that particular event to deliver a keynote address. So he also had to come back, but of course he continued with his work and he came back only to return to his base as a fired former MEC. Now, Tandi Muraka, as we speak, she is still in Zimbabwe, Rofiwa. She actually left a few days back when she was still the MEC. She is there with other MECs who remains in their positions. She is the only one who's been fired of the MECs who are in uh, Zimbabwe representing the provincial government. Now, I ask the Premier, because obviously when he makes new appointments, he would make calls to the people he wants to uh, 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 put in his executive council to say, I have this offer, are you available? And they would say yes or no. I asked whether he does that. Also, he calls or alert those that he intends to fire from the provincial executive council. And he says, look, if you do that, human beings by nature are subjective. If you tell them that you're going to fire them, chances are that they may no longer be, um, you know, energetic in executing their job. So he says he wanted them to continue carrying on with their responsibilities.